Merry Christmas, Solid Rock. We are so excited that you have chosen to join us for a few minutes this Christmas to reflect on the birth of our Savior. I have two sweet kiddos that are going to share with you the Christmas story. The angel Gabriel told Mary, you will have a baby. How? asked Mary. I'm not married. God's Holy Spirit will come down to you. The baby will be God's son. Mary believed him. Mary was engaged to Joseph, but he didn't believe her story. So an angel visited him too. So Mary's not lying. Her baby will be God's son, and you must name him Jesus. Many months passed. Then they traveled to Bethlehem, Joseph's hometown, to be counted by the government. All the inns in Bethlehem were full. So God's son was born in a stable, wrapped in cloths, and laid on a bed of hay. They named him Jesus. An angel appeared to some shepherds in the hills near Bethlehem. Good news, the angel said. Your Savior has been born. He's in Bethlehem, lying in a manger. Suddenly, more angels appeared, so many of them that they filled the skies. I praise God in heaven, they all sang. And may everyone who believes in him receive his peace. After the angels left, the shepherds hurried to Bethlehem to find the baby, their Savior, wrapped in swaddling cloths and laid on a bed of hay. After the shepherds had seen Jesus, they went to the town. They were very excited. They told everyone what had happened. They praised God for what he had done. Bye. The Christmas story is such a beautiful story, especially told by those two. Um, I might be a little bit partial, but I think they did a good job. I want to take just a few minutes to look at three characters in the Christmas story. I know some of us have been in church many years and have heard the Christmas story so many times, um, but indulge me as we look at the three main characters for just a minute. Let's start with Mary. Mary is a young, newly engaged girl that scholars say is somewhere between the ages of 12 and 16. She has plans for her life. And then an angel shows up and says to her, I know that you have plans, but God has a different one. I know that you thought you knew how your life was gonna go. I know that you had it all laid out and mapped out, but here's a different plan that's about to happen. Mary finds herself in a position where she's carrying something that she never asked for. She has to feel a little unprepared to be the mother of God. Have you ever felt like maybe you were unprepared or maybe a little immature to carry what God has asked you to carry? Step into Mary's shoes for just a moment. She gets this massive word from an angel and her reply is, I am the Lord's servant. I am ready to serve. Let it be with me just as you say. That was a beautiful reply, but now she still has nine months of people looking at her and doubting her integrity. Do you think that when she replied to the angel that she knew what carrying the Savior would cost her? A lot of times in life we shout about the exciting things that happen, the impossible things that, that God does, but what happens when he's asking to bring about those things through you? When he's wanting to use you? Do you reply like Mary? I am the Lord's servant. Or do we balk at the ask? What is your response when God asks something of you? When he's asking you to step out in faith or believe him to do something big in your life? Sometimes God will give you what you're praying for but it doesn't come in the way that you thought it would. Sometimes the call of God that he has placed in your life will cost you something. Maybe people are gonna think you're crazy. Maybe uh, they might say things like, oh my gosh, you quit your job, your full-time job, making good money with benefits to go work at the church, making way less money. Or you what? You sold your house and you're gonna move to Jamaica to start a mission? What? Or, wait, you are going to believe God for a baby. Don't you know you can't have children? Or you think your marriage can be restored? It's in shambles. 
I want to encourage you to trust that God can do the impossible. Let's reply like Mary did. I am the Lord's maid. I am ready to serve. Let it be with me just as you say. And can I add at no matter what cost? I'm thankful for Mary and her part in the birth and the life of Jesus. But I also want us to look a little bit at Joseph. Joseph, he's not usually one of the most popular nativity characters. Um, he's found this girl and he really loves her and he asks her to marry him. And, and she says, yes, it's great. Everything's good. And they're probably planning their wedding celebrations. And then she comes to him and she shares some news that blows him away. She tells him that she's pregnant. The Bible tells us that Joseph was a good man. So he was going to break it off, um, break off the engagement very quietly. He did not want to disgrace Mary, but let it be known he was out. Okay, there's Mary and there's baby and then there's Joseph and Joseph knew he didn't have anything to do with making the baby. So he's he's out. In this story, do you think that Joseph felt left out or like he was kind of overlooked? I mean, throughout the whole nativity story. I mean, Mary was important. Some religions even still pray to Mary. Mary gave birth to Jesus. Mary called him out at the age of 12. She released him to do his first miracle at 30. Mary is important. Mary was there when he died. Mary is strong. Mary is the one that brought the Savior into the world. Mary is the one that God chose out of all the people in the world. Mary was the real deal. I heard a preacher give this perspective once on Joseph and it really stuck with me. The preacher said, it's clear that Mary didn't need Joseph to have baby Jesus. But let's also be clear, Jesus needed Joseph. If you look at the prophecy long before Jesus was born, it said that the Messiah would come through King David's line. And as important and intricate as Mary is to the Christmas story, there's one problem. She's not from King David's line. It would be easy for Joseph to downplay his position here and say, I'm not that important. I didn't get to contribute. I, I mean, I'm the third will. And Joseph had a moment to sell himself short. But an angel appears to him and he calls him out. And the angel says three important words after he calls his name. He says, Joseph, son of David. Joseph, the one that I chose. Joseph, the one that I see. Joseph, the son of David. There are people under the sound of my voice today that feel like they're not important. Maybe you don't have a certain position or a certain title. You feel like you've been uh, left out or overlooked. But I wanna take a minute just to remind you that you are a child of the King. Mary got to carry the life of Jesus, but Joseph was the legacy of Jesus. Hundreds of prophecies foretold that Jesus would come through the line of David. If you look back through history, the line of David and the people that came before Joseph, his history is rich. Joseph had to stay married to Mary because Jesus needed Joseph. Have you ever felt not important in the midst of life? Ever felt like you not have a position? Ever felt without a title? Do not downplay your position now. You may not feel like you have the life inside of you, but you have legacy in you. Jesus came to Mary, but he passed through Joseph. And there's things in your life that you feel like it didn't go as you had planned. Joseph could have easily left and we could have understand why he left. But as we look in the scripture, as he's contemplating leaving and the angel comes to him and tells him, Joseph, don't leave. You have to stay. Some of you guys might be contemplating leaving because things don't look like what you thought they should look like. You feel like you've been overlooked. You've been left out. You have to stay. There are things that you cannot see right now. There are things that are bigger than this moment. And I know that even though you can't see them, and I know things feel very frustrating to you, but you have to stay. Jesus needed Joseph. Joseph doesn't get the statue in all the hospitals like Mary does, but Jesus needed Joseph. Let's look a minute at Jesus. I'm so thankful for Jesus. 
What an amazing Savior, Emmanuel, God with us. What an amazing God that we serve. Jesus is God in the skin. If you want to know what God looks like, don't go out off other people say or your own thoughts about it, but check, check Jesus out. If you want to know how God loves, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus loving the unlovable. Look at Jesus loving people who've messed up. If you want to know how God thinks, look at Jesus. If you want to know how God feels about the broken and the hurting people, look how Jesus was drawn to them. Look at the lepers. Look at him going to the paraplegic by the pool of Bethesda. Look at him going to the downtrodden that society says they, they aren't worth anything. Look at the woman who had been married five times and was living with number six. Jesus didn't act religious and just pass her by. His heart leans towards the brokenhearted and the hurting people. If you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. Calvary is proof that, that Jesus cares, that he loves you, that he cares about me. Have you ever asked yourself, does God even care? Calvary is the answer to that question. He didn't have to die. He didn't have to come. He didn't have to be born in a filthy stable. We have a savior that doesn't love from a distance, but rather he is Emmanuel. He is God with us. He said, when you go through the fire, you will not be burned because Emmanuel, God is with you. When you go through the flood, you won't drown because Emmanuel, God is with you. And when you face the rivers of difficulty and you feel overwhelmed by life and you don't know where to turn and you don't know where the answer is, don't be afraid. Emmanuel, God is with you. We have said several times in class um, throughout the weeks of December, Jesus is the reason for the season. And I love that. And we do want to make sure that our focus is on Jesus today and not just all the gifts and the fluff at Christmas time. But I heard a preacher make this statement and it's really a true statement. He said, so many times people say that Jesus is the reason for the season and that's good. But really, you are the reason for the season. Jesus is the one that we worship during the season, but you are the real reason for the season. He came to express the love of God for you. You're not just a number to him. You're not just one among many. He knows your name. He knows the very hairs on your head. Each one are numbered. He knows everything about you. As a parent, I think about the expression of love as God sent his son and laid him in that cradle. I think about the fact that God wanted a relationship with you and I so much. And God said, I know that you can't get to me, so I'll come to you. So that the son of God would become the son of man. So that the son of man could become the sons of God. Jesus did it. For you, he did it for me. The first smell in his little baby nostrils was the smell of animals. The first sound that he ever heard was the groan of livestock. The first clothes that the king of heaven ever wore were rags wrapped around him. God was saying, I don't want him to, to not feel what people go through in the real world. Jesus was the word made flesh and he dwelt among us. God lived and moved among us. He was human. And he knew what it was really like. He was fully God, yet he was fully man. He knew what it was to be tired. He knew what it was to be sad. He knew what it was like to watch people that he loved suffer. And he was touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He did all of that, that he might die for us as a sacrifice for our sins. There's a lyric to a song that I like to uh, play at Christmas time and it says, I celebrate the day that you were born to die so that one day I could pray for you to save my life. Don't you love that? The angel told Joseph that Mary would have a son and that he was to name him Jesus for he would save his people from their sins. That name Jesus means savior. And I often find myself in need of the reminder that Jesus is the savior and I am not. I've been through some seasons in my life where I am completely worn out and I'm exhausted and I'm frustrated because I'm trying to fix all of the problems. I'm trying to solve all the issues and to fix all the people in my life. And the Holy Spirit and his sweet, gentle goodness will often come to me and remind me that Sarah, 
you are not the savior of the world. Jesus is the savior of the world and you need to trust him. Jesus came because he loves you. There's nothing that you've done that could make him not love you. And this Christmas and this coming new year, it is our prayer that you would know him like never before, that you would trust him to be your savior and that he would be the light in your darkness. We have lit the candles of the Advent wreath for the past four Sundays in our Kids Rock class upstairs. Uh, we've been counting down the days to December 25th and we've talked about hope when we lit the first candle. We talked about love and peace and joy. And today we light the center white candle, which is the Christ candle. Lighting this candle is a physical manifestation of a very spiritual truth that our life was so dark, but then Jesus, the pure, white, sinless Lamb of God, came into our darkness and brought light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Maybe you're going through a dark time in your life. Maybe you're experiencing grief this Christmas because you've lost someone who's near and dear to you. Maybe you or someone you love is dealing with addiction or depression. There's all kinds of darkness in people's lives and it's easy to sit back and judge people and say, why don't they just get their lives together? But we don't understand everybody's situation, but there's one who does. He was fully God and fully man. He is God that dwelt among us. He understands our pain. He never puts a person down. He never throws a person away. He just comes with light and he says, I love you. I wanna encourage you this Christmas to let his light come into the darkness of your life. There's no place so dark that Jesus cannot bring light. I wanna pray with you today. Dear God, thank you that you are Emmanuel. You are God with us. I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to be the savior of the world. We are forever grateful. I pray that every person listening to the sound of my voice will receive you and have a fresh revelation of who you are. That the light of your presence would fill them and drive out all the darkness of this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Solid Rock, have a very Merry Christmas. We love you. Merry Christmas, Solid Rock. It's so good to get to spend a few moments with you this morning. You know, Christmas time reminds us of the hope that can be found in Jesus. That very night that Jesus was born and Mary gave birth to him, laying him in the manger, hope was born into the world. And all throughout Jesus's life, the miracles he did and his death on the cross to his resurrection, look at all the hope that he still is bringing to us today. Um, this time of year can be very overwhelming, can be stressful, we can let fear and anxiety and all kinds of things come in if we're not careful. Um, in Zechariah 9 12 it talks about being a prisoner of hope. I love that scripture because it does say also that I promise this very day that I will repay two blessings for each of your troubles. And so all the things that we go through in life um, that the enemy wants to throw at us, you know, God's saying here, hey, I'll give you double for your trouble. So anything that the enemy's tried to steal from you, God's going to repay us that. And he wants us to be a prisoner of hope. He wants us to hope in him and trust in him. Jesus wants us to cling to him. And so as you're maybe sitting around the fire, opening gifts, drinking some yummy coffee or eating some yummy treats, I want you to just really think about why we celebrate Christmas and all that Jesus did and the hope that he brings to us. So when you start to get anxious or feel overwhelmed at things, just run to him, run to the father. He is so good to us and he's just waiting there with his arms open wide and, um, he is our, our Savior and our, um, our wonderful God. And I just pray that you have such a great time with your family and enjoy everyone. Try not to get too stressed out at the relatives, but just love on everyone and realize that, that we have hope in Him today. And so God bless you all and have a wonderful Merry Christmas.